America is no stranger to times of crisis, but in the past, our darkest days have brought us together. It is, of course, part of the sentiment behind the slogan, united we stand, divided we fall. But what we're seeing right now is division, lines being drawn in the sand, protesters versus frontline workers, the president and governors now trading jabs, some governors and mayors having a hard time seeing eye to eye. Turmoil is now another tentacle of this deadly disease, but as usual, we look for the silver linings here and here in New York, the hardest hit state deaths and ICU admissions are down. But in Boston, the streets were empty today. The annual Boston Marathon shut down for the first time in more than a century. Coronavirus cases there continue to surge as they are in other parts of the country. More on that in just a moment. But Whit Johnson starts us off tonight with the battle playing out across the country on how to reopen and if it's safe to do so. Tonight, these stark images from Denver, illustrating the difficult decisions facing leaders at all levels of government, how to balance the pressure to reopen with the need to protect public safety. In the New York epicenter, where the pandemic has inflicted weeks of pain and heartbreak, tonight signs the state has turned a corner. Look at the curve over the last month, the number of people admitted to the hospital trending downward. Governor Cuomo urging caution. The question is now, how long is the descent and how steep is the descent? And nobody knows. One doctor seeing that decline uh, firsthand. When we first met Dr. Matthew Bai almost a month ago, he described Mount Sinai, Queens as a hospital under siege. Uh, you can see all the rooms are filled. Usually these halls are very neat and empty. And now you can see uh, there's patients everywhere. These days, a different picture. No patients in this hall at all. It is a beautiful sight to see. Still, across the country, more proof of the devastating toll. In Michigan, five-year-old Skylar Herbert becoming the state's first child to die of coronavirus. Skylar's parents, both veteran first responders. Her father, a Detroit firefighter. Her mother, a police officer. They've been on the front line and they've served with honor and integrity. And they did not deserve to lose their child to this virus. Also tonight, stories of hope. In New Jersey, 25-year-old Jack Allard, who was admitted to the hospital five weeks ago and placed on a ventilator, now recovered, walking out of the hospital on his own. In Louisiana, a patient discharged in true New Orleans fashion. The country is eager to roar back to life, but places like New York City stuck in a standstill. The Hudson River, usually crisscrossed by boats, now eerily empty. The mayor today canceling all parades through June including iconic celebrations like the Puerto Rican Day Parade and the Pride March. Tonight, growing consensus that the key to reopening the country is ramped up testing. This is one of the new walk-in testing sites that just opened up in Harlem. A line already stretches down the block. The city is increasing its focus on minority communities devastated by the pandemic and vulnerable residents over the age of 65. New York, like many states, struggling to meet demand. In Massachusetts, healthcare workers in full gear administering tests. In Kansas, a long line of cars. In Tennessee, the same story. Nationwide, the demand outweighing the supply. Governors pleading for help. Now they want to have us, the federal government, uh, do the testing. And again, testing is, is local. Governor Cuomo responding that New York labs are ready to do the tests. They just need the president's help getting the supplies. The big question on the testing is that national manufacturers supply chain and getting that up to scale quickly. The Republican governor of Maryland compelled to buy 500,000 test kits from South Korea. We provided each governor with a list of the names, addresses, and phone numbers of the labs where they can find additional testing capacity within their states. The governor from Maryland didn't really understand the list. He didn't understand too much about what was going on. Tonight, parts of the country slowly reopening, people flocking to some Florida beaches. In Georgia, the governor declaring gyms, barbershops, bowling alleys can reopen on Friday. Some restaurants and theaters, too, with social distancing. Day after day, we're seeing back-to-work protests breaking out, some larger than others, many echoing the words of the president who has egged them on, even as they violate the administration's own social distancing guidelines. These are great people. But Dr. Fauci warning that the protests, all those people rallying together, could backfire. What you do if you jump the gun and go into a situation where you have a big spike, you're going to set yourself back.
And Whit Johnson joins us now. Whit, we just saw that press conference where the president called out the governor of Maryland saying he doesn't understand the testing situation in his own state. Lindsay, the Republican governor of Maryland, Larry Hogan, says that he was already in contact with all of those labs on the list that the White House provided, but was told most are federally owned and that he did not have access. They were off limits, he says. The White House claims that will change soon. Meantime, Governor Cuomo in New York says it's not the labs, it's the materials in short supply to carry out the testing. He'll have the opportunity to voice his concerns face to face with the president tomorrow when they meet at the White House. Lindsay. Whit Johnson reporting in for us tonight in New York. Thanks, Whit. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.